Okay, today's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, after I had my first attempt at making an Osage bow, and it wound up cracking, and I went down too deep into the wood, <clears throat> I ordered this from uh, Custom King Archery. It was an Osage, Osage bow kit. And what it was, was it was taken down to the growth ring already, and laid out and trimmed, okay, which saves like two days worth of work. You know, so I had got a stave from uh, Esty in the meantime, and uh, another wood, you know, took off the bark and everything and made my second bow. So, I one of these arrived in the mail, and uh, it was shaped like an hourglass where the grip was. It was it was meant to be, I guess, shot off the hand, so it was narrow. And what I like to do is have a, a nice grip with a, a shelf in it. So I called them up and I said, any way I could uh, send this back and get one that had a, a blockier grip that I could reshape myself? And uh, said, no problem. And they sent it back and they, I received one of these a few days ago. This one I received a few days ago. And it saves a lot of work. And, they, and you have to work hard on all of these, regardless of the fact that it was down to a growth ring and a rough cut already. If you look at this, uh, first thing I do is I put a string to see what the alignment of the bow is, the limbs. <clears throat> and it's okay to have snaky twist in these Osage bows. They look really cool, but you don't want the, you don't want the string to pop off. And um, in this case, it has such a drastic bend right here, and you see the weird, weird shape, the weird grain of the wood. So the first thing I'm gonna try and do is, I may take, take it down first, and then I'm gonna heat this one up and try and straighten it a little bit, okay? Because I, I don't want the string off the edge. I want it on it a little bit on this particular bow. And then what I'm gonna do is, after I shape it and get it pretty much to where I want, I'm gonna start, before I tiller it, or actually, I may start tillering it, and then I'm going to put recurve ends on it. I'm going to steam the ends of these bows, the limbs, and I'm going to put a recurve on them. I'm going to see what happens, all right? So, I successfully made my bow. This is all trial and error, just fun. And you can follow me and see if, I, if it works out that I don't break another bow. And then we'll have a recurve Osage bow hopefully, maybe even by the end of today, the end of Christmas. All right, follow me. Um, the other thing I found out that's easy to work with, I had at first a, like a boyer's horse that a, a horse that a friend let me, and you step on and sit on it, but it was so wobbly, it's hard to scrape. So I built my own reinforced uh, saw horse, and that was more solid. Then I went one step further, and I have this little trailer, <clears throat> and that's my archery cart. I don't golf. That's my archery cart for the long course that we have on Long Island. And what I did was I ratchet strapped this horse to that tailgate, and it makes it really solid. And that's kind of what you want, solid to use the uh, draw knife. Um, so you're not rocking back and forth. You're actually cutting material and not wasting your movements and your time. All right, so enough talking. I'm going to start taking it down, and I'll show you the heating process. And the only thing I can tell you is if um, you're older and the draw knife's getting a bit much, if you have a, I have an 18 inch belt sander, a Ryobi belt sander. And uh, if you put 80 grit on that and you're very careful with it and you lay it down and you move it back and forth, it'll, it'll help take down some material, um, you know, within that line. And then you could use the uh, scraper like I'm using 
and then you don't have to worry about the draw knife going into the wood. All right, so just in case, you know, I don't care. People say, oh, you're not making it from scratch or whatever, but if you're older, um, I just tried it and it, 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 it worked it worked pretty good. So, you know, do whatever you gotta do. You can make your bow, you know, say you made your own bow. So what if you didn't use, uh, you know, you're using a bandsaw anyway to cut it out. So why not use the, uh, the belt sander to take it down a little to the line without worrying about digging in. And then the cabinet scraper and the, well actually rasp and carpeted scraper to get it down to that line. I still got a lot of work to do, but I just tried it and that belt sander really uh, took off a lot of material with ease and smooth, okay? Okay, here's the meaty part of the grip, okay? And I noticed that the center line is a little high on the handle and I wanna lower it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna remove a half an inch off that end to lower the center point by a half inch. Okay. That'll move the center point down a half inch. Okay, we got some movement here, nice. Starting to move. Nowhere's near where it's gonna be, but we got enough that I could try and straighten out these limbs. And then we'll, uh, we'll work on it some more, but the limb straightening is gonna come now. Okay, to the bottom, it's 36 and three quarters. We're gonna put a bucket and we're gonna put a lump hammer inside. Then we're gonna heat it. Okay, we're going to continue to heat the belly. I just warm up the back a little bit. I want to warm it up all around. But I want to heat the sides and the belly. The part that faces your belly. Okay, we use dry heat and uh, I heated it up for probably over 20 minutes. And uh, it, it did take some of the, it did straighten out a little bit. We'll see in a little while what it looks like. I gotta let it cool for about a half hour. But the, once again, the belly, the part that faces your belly, um, you do most of the heating. I like to warm up the back a little bit, which is the part that's away from you, okay? We'll see what happens. Okay, I went in the house, took a little break for about 40 minutes. It was 36 and three quarters. Let's see if we got any, any better. It barely moved it barely moved it so what we're going to do is it did move it a little bit but barely moved it we're going to have to try steaming it we're going to have to try and steaming this and moving it okay since the dry heat didn't really work we're going to steam this inside for at least a half hour 
Then I'm going to come and I'm going to put the clamp on on this side where it's kind of flush. And we're going to, at that point, we're going to try and uh, bend it down once it's steamed. Okay, I want to try and get this as straight as I can, especially since I'm going to use this jig that I made. Okay, to put the recurve ends on this bow. I'm going to make a recurve, Osage recurve bow. All right. Okay, it's been steaming up good. Getting ready to move it outside. Okay, I had it in the steam. I put some water in the bottom of the pot. I let it go. I put this uh, stave in for 45 minutes. You know, just ready to give time for the water to boil. Covered it with the tin foil. Came outside as fast as I could and I'm clamped it. And look, it had a big space. It's, I clamped it flush to the board. See how flush it is now? I will let this stay like this for a little while and uh, let it cool. And then we'll see how it comes out. And if it comes out good, the next thing we're going to do is um, try the recurve limbs, okay, with my jig I made. Okay, here we go. We're putting recurve ends on the Christmas bow. Okay, not bad, huh? Let's check it out. My recurve jig. Some weight reduction, and then uh, we're going to uh, check it on the tiller again. We're trying to make straight, nice straight scrapes. Okay, we had a little string alignment issue. The string popped off, it was a little twisted. I'm gonna twist it back for the heat gun. I'm gonna let it cool, strain it, and see how it is. It's about 45 pounds that might go away. Other than that, it seems to be okay. All right, get back to you. Okay, a little bit more. A little more of a twist. Try and get a string alignment. Okay, here we are with my Christmas bow, my Osage recurve. And uh, I had a lot of issues outside with the uh, limbs not being aligned enough for the string. They kept popping off, so I had to reheat the limbs and move them over. Um, I don't even have a uh, pad on here yet, but uh, I pulled it back several times to warm it up and the limbs seem to be okay. So let's see, we're gonna take a shot here at that uh, block target just to see how it hits. Look at that, not bad. Gotta do another one, it's so good. Right to left is perfect. Right to left is perfect. With the 600 spine arrows and 160 grain head. 
Okay, let's do one more. Now I kind of see where they're hitting. Look at that, look at that. Not bad, right? So, I'm very happy with this. Very happy with it. Okay, I think I'm done. I got over the uh, self bow builds. Uh, I had one fail, which a lot was was the wood, you know, and my inexperienced. And then the other one uh, came out okay, it was good, but it had some uh, weird knots that I couldn't tiller it uh, without I'd have a great uh, bend and I'd make a 20 pound bow, so I kind of left it as is. And now I got the recurve. And the recurve's shooting it pretty good, man. It really is. I gotta shoot one more. I don't know if you can see where the point is. Here's the point, right? And here's the X. I'm right on top of the X. So it's so good, I gotta shoot one more. Watch all my other videos on Bad Bow Joe. You never know what I come up with. Okay, it's been a fun build. I got a mess to clean up in the garage. Let me just straighten this camera out just a little bit here. Okay, I got a mess to clean up in the garage. Put away all my clamps and tools. and So let's see, we'll take one a little further here. Okay. Okay, let's go take a look just to show you how good this thing's shooting. Okay, right. so check that out. I'm aiming about here, and it's hitting about there, right? Here and there, look at that, not bad at all. So, here we are. Thanks for watching. Watch my other videos. Like and subscribe, okay?